Thanks for staying on Joe News today. Let's do some election-related stories now. An economy of straw and not concrete. That's the verdict of running mate of the NPP, Dr. Mahmoud Baumi, on Ghana's economy. According to him, the John Mahama-led administration has destroyed the solid foundation built by the NPP between 2001 and 2008. Dr. Baumia was speaking at a public lecture on the theme, State of Ghana's Economy, a Foundation of Concrete or Straw. Joy News' Enes Kojomenu was there and brings us highlights of the event. The National Theatre was filled to capacity with party members from the rank and file of the new patriotic party, including former President John Ajikum Kufo. Flag bearer of the NPP, Nane Kufuado, was optimistic the lecture will help inform the decision of Ghanaians ahead of the December polls. And it is important, it is important that at this very delicate juncture in Ghanaian history that we should hear the unvarnished truth so that our people will be in a position to make an informed decision as to what to do in December 2016. For Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the foundation of Ghana's economy is weak and attributes this to what he says is the incompetence and mismanagement of Ghana's resources by the NDC government for the past eight years. Mr. Chairman, any assessment about the state of the economy and the performance of the government must be against the background of the amount of money or resources that has been available to, that has been at the disposal of any government. At a public lecture in September 2008, the then Vice President, Shell candidate, John Mahama, said, and I quote, to whom much is given, much is expected, end quote. I would like, with his permission, to borrow his exact words to describe his government's exact performance in the last eight years. In this regard, it is important to emphasize for the record that measured in terms of today's dollars and cities, no government since independence has had the amount of resources in terms of tax revenue, cocoa exports, gold exports, oil revenues, and loans as the two NDC administrations between 2009 and 2016. If, if in the presence of good rains, you claim to have used a lot of fertilizer, but still end up with a poor harvest, you are likely not a good farmer. He offered some solution on how to recover from what, in his view, is the ailing economy of Ghana. To do this, we have to address head on the economic challenges that confront our economy. These include macroeconomic instability, the banking sector fragility, unsustainable debt, unemployment, the energy crisis. We need to empower the private sector. We need inclusive growth and higher infrastructure expenditure relative to GDP. We need to increase agricultural productivity. We need to industrialize. We need to bring down the high interest rates, stabilize the exchange rate, and provide more credit to the private sector. In what looked like another campaign platform for the NPP, the former deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana promises party will resolve the problem of unemployment in the country by initiating a flexible tax regime and focusing on production. Mr. Chairman, the mismanagement of the economy under this John Mahama government has resulted in an increase in taxes on virtually everything taxable. This has increased the burden on the private sector and is a disincentive for production. High taxes also increase the cost of living for Ghanaians. Many of the taxes that have been imposed are nuisance taxes. They are nuisance taxes whose yield is quite low, but whose burden on business and on individuals is quite high. To address these challenges, the, the MPP will shift the focus of the economy away from taxation and towards production. So we are going to implement a number of tax reforms, and you are going to see the energy of the private sector unleashed. <laughs> 
as a result. He also indicated the need to secure a proper database of the country as part of the process of building a stronger economy. In this regard, Dr. Baumia promised that an MPP government will, will formalize the economy through the establishment of a national database using the national identification system. This government for eight years has been unable to issue national ID cards. The MPP will do it in our first year of government. First year, we will issue national ID cards. The lecture ended with a passionate appeal on Ghanaians to vote the new patriotic party and its flag bearer, Naneku Fuado, in the December 7 polls. For John News, Ernest Kojomil. Still on elections, the Electoral Commission has increased filing fees for presidential aspirants in this year's election by five folds, a move that has angered some political parties. At an inter-party advisory committee IPAC meeting Thursday, the AC revealed that presidential candidates of the various political parties would be required to pay 50,000 Ghana cities. Filing fee for parliamentary candidates has been pegged at 10,000 Ghana cities. Nomination fees for parliamentary candidates during the 2012 election was 1,000 Ghana city. Hence, the new charges represent an increase of 1,000%. Presidential candidates paid 10,000 the same year. Some political parties have been reacting to the new fees. See, that's a lot of money and, and, and in modern uh, uh, Ghana. Right. So the best people to ask are the easy. But for me, it's a lot of money. Did you question or did you raise objections? We did. And what was the response of the EC? Well, it's a decision of the EC that they also don't want proliferation of non-existent parties and individuals who cannot, who just come and worry them with their processes. Isn't that a right justification? It's not. It's not. I think there must be a balance of people's ability to participate in our democracy. Mind you, mind you, it is not only political parties that present candidates. You do not need to have financial arm or muscle to contribute to a quota to nation building. This is not good enough. Young people who are beginning life and want to contribute by way of offering themselves in terms of leadership when they have the skill, the talent, the zeal, and the capacity to lead. You're saying that if they don't have the financial muscle, they should go hang? No. Our Electoral Commission cannot do that. And we made this known to the Commission at the meeting. And we want to continue. We'll continue the protest until the right thing is done. What was the response of the EC when you raised well, this concern? They are saying that they are going to consider, and we hope they will consider. But already the matter is out there. And I'm calling on Ghanaians, in their thousands and millions, to stand against these outrageous figures that the Electoral Commission is demanding as filing fees for presidential and parliamentary. But Mr. Bonfrey, one would say that to run an election would be something that's expensive, naturally. Putting up billboards, doing adverts, traveling around country, shouldn't 50,000 be something that a political party should be able to afford? budget for its, the running of its activities is paid by you and I, the taxpayer. So the Electoral Commission is going to run its is not going to run its activities with the filing fees that we will pay to them. Exactly. So it is a non-starter to argue that uh, because I'm going to run uh, a, a campaign, that is the more reason. I, I mean, and, and buy uh, uh, T-shirts, run posters. I mean, I should also pay additional fees. That's the more reason why the fees should be, you know, encouraged. It should be reduced so that it is reasonable. And don't forget. If you look at the fees we have been paying over the years, compared to what was paid even in 2012, by parliamentary candidate, I was a parliamentary candidate, I paid 1,000 cities. Now you're asking me to pay 10,000. 10, you know what the percentage increase is oh, there? Yeah. A 1,000 increase? Is that fair? Is that fair? What are you going to do as, as, as political parties? Well, as I've said, this is the beginning of the protestation. And we'll go to the extent that the law allows us to go. But I understand that the EC creates a caveat saying that a party that gets 12.5% will be refunded it uh, this not, filing. It is a non-starter. That caveat, it is not a caveat in paying the money. It is something that the EC has done. When you meet a certain um, threshold of votes or percentage, at the end of the day, the Electoral Commission makes a refund at the end of the process. But that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about asking people to pay the money as a qualification to contest. That's what we are saying. It is bad enough. We should not encourage this thing at all because the exercise of our democratic right is part of the process of ensuring that there's peace, sanity, and serenity 
in our atmosphere. If you discourage people from, I mean, uh, contesting, and so their supporters, their fans, decide that they are going to, you know, disengage in the democratic practice, what happens? It is bad enough, and we should all condemn it. The EC has also set September 13 for both presidential and parliamentary candidates to pick nomination forms at its offices. All candidates must submit the nominations on September 29 and 30, 2016. And meanwhile, the EC says as part of efforts towards preparation of the upcoming polls, it will give all the political parties copies of the certified voters register by September 23. You're watching Join News today with me, Ben Sabubedu.